Next time you eat a meal, I want you to eat with your non-dominant hand and that will slow you down. <laughs> I said, listen, you know, you've probably been eating fast for, you know, a large part of your life. So your brain will automatically do it. But if you just tell yourself, okay, I'm gonna eat with my left hand instead of my right hand, it forces you to slow down. Sure. And so he's like, oh my God, I'm totally gonna to try it. Monday was my birthday. And so I had a whole lot of people that came and we went to a hibachi restaurant. And if you know hibachi, it can be really, really challenging. Number one, you've got the chef that's gonna be preparing food for eight different people at the table, right? Now I'm trying to follow a little bit more of a healthy lifestyle. So I noticed that when they make hibachi foods, they're using tons of soy sauce, tons of oil, tons of butter, oh, totally all these different silly. things, right? That are not very good for you. Did you go to Benihana? No, I went to a place called Izumo. Oh, Zumo. It's okay. in Coral Springs. Okay. But that's, that's where my girlfriend lives and that's where her family is. And so we decided to meet there because my mom lives in Del Rey. So that was kind of like a central place, right? Got it, got it. So I decided I'm going to order a piece of salmon. Okay. And I said to the guy, please, no salt, no oil, no butter. And he looked at me and he's like, would you like any flavor with your salmon? <laughs> and I says, it's got plenty of flavor. It's natural fat, right? Lots of flavor. And then he says, would you like some lo mein? We call that our Japanese spaghetti. I said, no, no lo mein, please. How about some fried rice? Well, can I just get the brown rice? Because I know a lot of times you call brown rice white rice with some Japanese ketchup, which is more soy sauce. <laughs> so I said, no, I don't want that. So everybody around me at the table is, of course, looking at me and saying, that's the pita. That's the guy that I'm supposed to be avoiding going out to eat with, right? <laughs> The food and, Nazi. Yeah. And so it's funny because when I talk to guests all the time, I always encourage them to not be that PETA. But that was me being the PETA the entire time. That is so funny. And it was your birthday. You didn't even you didn't even open up a little bit on the birthday. You kept the Pritikin perfect program. I did. So, uh, it's my lifestyle. It's, I was going to say, <laughs> that's what you're known for, Lon, is that you are just Pritikin perfect. That's that's how you roll. I am not Pritikin perfect. <laughs> I am Pritikin almost perfect. Okay, well, definitely a little bit more perfect than I am. I, I, I bend the rules now and again. But for the most part, I call myself the 80-20 girl. 80% of the time, I'm Pritikin almost perfect. 20% of the time, I go a little off-road. Off but, you know, every, to each their own. And, and I, think that's, I think that's something really, really great um, that we have in working together because we're both, um, we've both been registered dietitians for, you know, 20 plus years. We have a lot of experience, but our styles are very different in terms sure. of how we talk to people and how we counsel. And I think it's just, honestly, it's a really perfect combination because some people need that all or nothing kind of mentality to really help them get to where they want to go. And some people need a little flexi so that they can do better and be better and progress but not exactly, you know, always be critic and almost perfect because mm -hmm. sometimes for some people that that type of style derails them because they, they can't do it. And for other people, that's how they have to do it, because if they go a little bit off, they they just can't get back on. Yeah, so sure. I, I really think that we're a really good pair in terms of, you know, how 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 our styles are and the information is the same. It's just, it's just sort of, you know, how, how we present it. And um, I, you know, I always do the beginning part of the lectures, the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and, and, and I talk about how on Thursday you're going to be with Lon and you're going to be dining out. And my advice to you is um, just stay home because all of the different things that you have to do and say and present and call ahead and all of this kind of stuff, it's totally doable. Like you can make it happen. But for me, I'm just like, oh, God, it's just easier just to stay home and invite people over and, and cook for them. And, and then I don't have to deal with, you know, all of the little idiosyncrasies um, that, that you have to do. But you know what? Listen, at the end of the day, we get a lot of guests here that come and they have to go out to eat because they, they, they travel for business or they're retired and they're always traveling. So, you know, they have to figure out ways to dine out. And I just think you do such an amazing job of you know, creating ways to work around um, all the obstacles that exist in, in our society today. Um, I, I kind of tell, tell all the guests all the time, this place, Pritikin, 
is rainbows and unicorns. Like everything you do here, everything you say here, every, every exercise you do, somebody's watching, making sure you have the right form. Um, there's no added salt. There's no saturated, added saturated fat. There's no processed sugar. It's like pressing the easy button. People do great while they're here. This is the safe cocoon, right? right? And then when they leave <laughs> the Pritikin bubble, I call it the lions and tigers and bears because there's all this sugar, salty, fatty food that exists um, everywhere we turn, all the restaurants we go, all the, the apps that we could order food to be delivered. Um, it's, we, we are really bombarded with that. So um, I think it poses a lot of challenges and obstacles for people when, when they leave here. Um, so, um, you know, what, what, I, what I'd love to talk about today is um, some of the services that we offer for our guests after they leave here to help them um, do better and be better and not go off the rails once they leave the Pritikin campus. I think that's a great idea. Um, one of the most important things that people can invest in is their health, their longevity, but most importantly, their quality of life as they continue to get older. So one of the things that we offer here that we do a great job of working with our guests when they leave here from the program, we actually have the opportunity to continue to work with them. And if you look at the real world, anybody can go to any particular program, but once they leave that program, what support exists for them? There's After. a lot of misguided information. There's a lot of things that people will hear and read and see, and people want to tell you all the great things. But what we offer here is a great program that we do called Pritikin on Track. And with that program, we have the ability to provide accountability to the guests when they leave here. We have the ability to continue to work with them, to help them stay committed, to help them stay motivated, to be team, whatever that individual is, because our goals for them is not just to come into the program and to try to improve their health over a one to two week period of time, but it's really over the course of their entire life. So giving us the opportunity to continue to work with them is going to provide that investment that they can take home, they can stay with, and it's gonna to continue to help them moving forward, whether they have a therapeutic condition that they need to be reversed, whether they're just looking to try to kind of revamp their eating style based on what they did, especially during the crux of COVID that we've all suffered That's from over the last couple of years. Agreed, that really put a wrench in, in everybody's lifestyle, for sure, for sure. I get that all the time when, when people come here, oh, I was doing so great, and then COVID happened, and then it went, <laughs> down the, you know, what are. <laughs> yeah, but the alcohol industry did fantastic. <laughs> yes, and so, so did the dining out industry, right? Yeah, All the places, sure I mean, people weren't going to the restaurants, but they sure were ordering and picking up and getting delivered. And, um, you know, people that were used to eating at home all of a sudden were, were ordering food all the time because, because it was easy and because they were lazy and they got into this little rut and, um, I think another thing that's been really cool about um, since everything's opened up again, we have a big surge of people wanting to come to Pritikin because it's it's a good little kick in the butt to get yourself going, you know, because when you fall far down, far down the hill, it's really hard to get back up. But if you come here, it, it's just sort of easy, right? You just show up and um, they tell you what to eat. They tell you how to exercise. There's a psychologist that tells you, talks about, you know, what's going on in the head, all those all those voices that are telling us all these crazy things. What do we call, what does she call it? Auto, auto thoughts and things like that. So I, I also, the other thing that I would say about Pritikin on track that I have found to be so invaluable to the guests since I've come on board is that um, there's so much information that is given to the guests while they're here. There is lectures pretty much all day long from all different disciplines, the doctors, the nutritionists, the psychologists, the physical therapists, the exercise trainer. So they're really bombarded with a plethora of information. And I, I know, I mean, they probably maybe can take back 20% of, of what it is that they hear. And so a lot, in, and we do the lectures all the time. So we think that they're, they're getting it, but at the end of the day, you know, they forget, they forget things. Sure. And, and, and I realized this because just today, um, I was on the phone with a, one of a, a client that's on Pritikin on track and, uh, he's doing great. His blood sugars are normalized, his blood pressure. He's off all of his meds for, for diabetes. Um, he's halved his hypertension medication, but he really was kind of forgot all about the label reading guidelines. Um, because, 
you know, when, when he was here he was like, and we went to the grocery store, we reviewed it and everything, but you know, he left and he went home and he was going to the grocery store. He's like, Harry, you know what? Could we review that label reading guideline again? Because I, I'm a little bit confused. When do I look at the weight? When do I look at the calories, the sodium, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And, um, what I realized is, is that just because we know it and we do it all the time, we feel like they get it. But at the end of the day, um, it slips right out. You know, it slips out. And, and, and what's really good is that if they continue the conversation when they leave here, all of that information that they sort of absorbed will continue when, when they go home and then it'll stick. And, and I think, honestly, I think that's what sets Pritikin apart from some of the other programs is we give you the information, but then we follow you when you leave. So we make sure that you continue this, not as just a, a temporary fix, but but a overall lifestyle and, and habit changing situation. So um, I, I think that you're right. I think Pritikin on track is invaluable to all the guests that come here because they do invest a lot of time and a lot of money. Um, and, and then wh why take all of that and let it go because they leave here and forget some of the information or or don't have the, the little accountability person knocking on the door and say, hey, did, did you drink all that water that we were talking about? And did, did you do your hit, hit classes three times this week? And um, that little reminder that, you know, oh, I have the phone call with Lon or I have the phone call with Kara. Um, they, they tell me all the time, it, it really makes such a big difference in, in their success. So, And what better way to get your health in gear especially before we have the very challenging holidays coming yep, up. Yeah, Halloween's coming, Thanksgiving's <laughs> coming. Um, I actually, there, there was a guest that I had an appointment with today. And interestingly enough, he lives on a boat. So that oh, poses some serious challenges in terms of cooking, right? And uh, one of the things that we talked about was, because he, he likes to eat out because, you know, he lives on a boat. He doesn't have a lot of space to store food or anything like that. Sure. And, you know, we started talking about it. I'm like, listen, you, you know, you went to Lon's lecture. You, you, you know all <laughs> the tips and the tricks. But at the end of the day, it, it is pretty challenging. Sure. And we came up with this idea that um, he would get an air fryer. Like, um, it, 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 this is one of these um, things I have at home. It's not only an air fryer, but it's also a toaster oven. It I convex love those. And, and it's like one of this all-in-one thing. And I'm like, you just need that one item and you you could make so many different things. You can make um, proteins, you can make, uh, you can roast your air fry your vegetables, you can do your sweet potatoes, just like we did here Absolutely. with that one little, and, and he's like, oh my God, Kara, like, that's a great idea. And guess what? When you get home, we'll talk about it. He, he actually, the other thing I forgot to tell you was he's never cooked before. So not only does he live on a very Even small more space, challenges. He is not very familiar in the cooking space. And I said, good news, air fryer is super easy. You just stick it in, you spray a little, little oil on it, and you turn on the button and you're good to go. And so I'm going to work with him and get him cooking in the boat. And um, he's like really stoked. And he's like, gosh, I, di I didn't even know that this program existed. And um, <laughs> he, um, he's super excited. Oh, so it's, it, it's really, hear. really helpful for people for a plethora of reasons, whether they have no no cooking skills whatsoever, or they have wonderful cooking skills, but the types of ingredients that they were using before are not things that are serving them well. So, you know, chef does a great job of, of teaching them replacements for oils and sugars and, and saturated fats and, and all that kind of stuff. So it really caters to, to anybody. Absolutely. I think that's a great idea. Um, <clears throat> I have a lot of clients that I work with that travel a lot especially internationally. And so these folks, they go to Europe and they say, mm -hmm. how am I gonna make this program work for me when I go traveling all the way over there? And I say, well, it's gonna be a little bit different than when you are here in the United States. <laughs> sure. However, there's certain things that we can take that we've done here and that you've applied that you can still take over there, right? We talk about how oatmeal is our breakfast of champions. Well, let's say that you don't have a really good oatmeal there. Well, what do we encourage people to do here? You could actually buy single serve packets of oats where the only ingredient is just rolled oats when they go to your label reading class and they mm -hmm. see that there's no other ingredient of salt or sugar or anything else. That's something they can bring with them. They can bring them on the plane with them as a healthy snack, maybe get some fruit at the airport and they can bring with them on the plane. There's always hot water because they offer uh, tea, tea coffee. and coffee. Absolutely. So you can always get that. 
And you can even bring it with you and keep it not just in your carry-on, but keep it with you in your suitcase when you travel, bring it out and keep it in your hotel room wherever you're staying because you can easily produce some oatmeal right there. Absolutely. And you don't have to worry about the labels that exist in Europe or other countries, right? What about dining out? We know that's going to be even more of a challenge as well, right? Because what if you can't communicate with these individuals? Well, here at Pritikin, we have a great tool that is provided at the end of my dining out lecture. We give you this credit card and it's a dining out medical restaurant card that's signed by Dr. Fouget, our medical director. And it indicates to the restaurants to please ensure for health and medical reasons that salt and oil and butter and sugar is not found in any of the foods. But if you're in a different country and you can't communicate with them, that poses even more of a challenge, it right? Does, yeah. So these are some of the things that we talk about during these Pritikin on Track calls to help people stay engaged, to help people continue to follow the program, even some of the most challenging situations and a lot of the obstacles that they face in the real world, obviously not the safe space here. Here, Pritikin. right, exactly. And, and I think that's something very, very encouraging for our guests because I feel that they get really frustrated with these types of challenges and obstacles, and, and they just sort of throw in the towel because they're like, I can't figure this out, screw it, right? And then, and then we offer these like really good little tips and tools, like bringing the oatmeal and getting the fruit at the airport. And um, honestly, pretty much wherever you, could, wherever you go, whether it's the U.S. Or, or outside of the U.S., you could get some Greek yogurt, you can get some vegetables. Um, I actually just traveled to Europe recently and everywhere that I went, there was always seafood offered, you know, and seafood is, is a great heart healthy, lean type of protein. Um, and the other thing that I noticed, and I talked about this in the other podcast that I thought was cool, is that when you go to these restaurants in Europe, they don't put bread on the table when you sit down. And I think that's like a huge, a huge savior for, for a lot of us. I said, we need to bring that over here. Every single restaurant you don't need to put bread on the table when you sit at the table. That's true, you but could, there's usually like a method to their madness, yeah, right? There's no, a reason I know. why they're it's, providing It's America, bread. the land of the plenty. <laughs> I, I get it, but I'm just, I just, I just think that um, there, there, there are so many challenges and so many walks of life that come in here, and um, you know, with the experience that we have and all the different guests that we work with, I think we really have a really nice big uh, tool chest that we can offer to our guests to, to be better and do better um, even when, when they're not here. So they don't feel like, I mean, listen, people come back all the time. What is it? We have like a, at least a 50% return rate because what happens is, is that, you know, sometimes it's nice not to have to think about it, that you just show up and everything is good. Yeah, and it also kind of like revitalizes and remotivates to, you know, get back into the groove. And um, it's great to come back, but it's great to continue when you leave, and um, I always just, I kind of joke around with people. I'm like, I'm kind of small. You can just sort of roll me up and put me in your suitcase and roll me to your place. <laughs> but what I'm really saying is that we offer this virtual counseling. So even though I'm not with you, um, there's all this technology that I could actually be with you. And people text me all the time. They go to this restaurant. What do you think of this? And it's just, it's nice to have that in your back pocket, right? When you need it um, so that you can, um, create a lifestyle for yourself and not keep going this yo-yo back and forth stuff that is very frustrating psychologically and not so great for the body either. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, another thing that uh, we do when you mentioned about text and having the ability for your guests that come to our program when they leave and go home, that they can ask questions or if they have any concerns about anything. Yep. And we're the right hand woman as well as man to help them provide those recommendations to help guide them so they continue continue to be successful, right? So a lot of that kind of goes a long, long way, but also one of the other things that I do as well when we talk about communication is a lot of people have trouble in terms of their accountability of mindfulness. Mm -hmm. And so they find themselves eating certain foods, kind of going off the Pritikin program a little bit, and they might introduce something that has more salt in it or more sugar or more fat, right? And then they find themselves getting into these situations where they kind of wake up their palate a little bit, right? Yeah. And so totally. it becomes very, very difficult to get yourself back on track. So one of the things that we also offer as part of that kind of remote coaching is what about the accountability in terms of journaling, right? Mm-hmm. So anybody can obviously use an application like a MyFitnessPal or something like that. 
And all it does is really just construct their meal plan regarding calories. Right. And as you know, here at Pritikin, we don't count calories. Right. We focus right. on the density of the food. So when it comes to the ability to help our guests continue to be successful, it's about the mindfulness of the food that they're consuming. It's the quality. So helping them with that consistent feedback and the communication, I have found to be extremely beneficial in their ability to be successful because they feel like they have somebody that is supportive of them. Yeah. Someone no, that continues so right. to want them to follow the program and, and be successful with the goal that they're trying to meet. Yeah. You know, I actually, I do that mindfulness luncheon every Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the the one of the guests that I was just um, doing a consult with, he was a, he, the guy on the boat was here, but the, the other person that I was talking with today, um, I've been working with him remotely. And one of the things he actually mentioned today was how fast that he eats. And, and we went over the whole, he's like, oh yeah, Kara, I missed your mindfulness lunch. And I said, no worries. Let's just talk about it right now. And I told him the next time you eat a meal, I want you to eat with your non-dominant hand and that will slow you down. <laughs> and he's like, oh my God. I said, listen, you know, you've probably been eating fast for, you know, a large part of your life. So your brain will automatically do it. But if you just tell yourself, okay, I'm going to eat with my left hand instead of my right hand it forces you to slow down. Sure. And so he's like, oh my God, I'm totally gonna try it. So just suffice to say that, that continuing the conversation, reminding people of things that they may have missed when they were here, we can still provide that for them. So um, thumbs up to Pritikin on track. Mm -hmm.